So hi guys, my name is Nachiketa. Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to deploy your Flask application onto AWS Elastic Beanstalk. Now I've made several videos on machine learning model deployment, deploying your Flask apps on Heroku as well. So make sure that you've seen those videos. In this videos, I'm going to tell you the exact steps that you need to deploy a Flask app onto AWS Elastic Beanstalk. Now these steps are very simple. There are very three or four basic steps. And the first step that you have to do is first of all, create an account on AWS. So this is the AWS website, right? You can just log on to aws.amazon.com. And the first thing you have to do is you have to create your own account. So AWS is basically a cloud computing platform and it will allow you to deploy your application. It can provide you virtual servers on the cloud and it can provide you any specifications that you want as well. So right now, what you have to do is you have to sign up. It's showing sign in for me because I already have an account. Now, when you do that, you will have to first give your credit card information, right? Now you'll only select the free tire plan, right? And you won't be charged for that. You will probably be charged two rupees for that. So we're going to use that for now, right? Once you create your account, you can select the root user option and simply log into your console. So this is your AWS console. Right now you have to search for something called as the Elastic Beanstalk. It's already over here for me, but just go and search Elastic Beanstalk and I'm going to tell you what it is. So basically Elastic Beanstalk is a service that AWS provides, which is basically allow, which basically allows you to deploy your web applications very easily. Your applications can be based on Python, Ruby, Java, anything. Right now we're handling a Flask application. So steps are very, very, very easy. So make sure that you have an account over here. Now, before actually deploying the application, let me show you what Flask application I'm actually deploying. So it's basically a website, a basically a form that looks like this. I've also made a tutorial that teaches you how to make this exact Flask form. Uh, you can find this on my previous videos. This is a basically a form uh, in which you can provide information. And once you click the submit button, it redirects you to this page, right? It basically tells you uh, what is your email ID, your publicity feedback. And it has also done our prediction is which is a flaw in the code. I should not have uh, printed this over here. But basically this is a Flask application, right? Now I have to deploy this onto the AWS cloud using the Elastic Beanstalk service. So basically you can extend this to any Flask application. It can be any web app. It could be a machine learning web app, right? Because the steps are going to remain the same, right? So this is my Flask application, right? Do not uh, think about the code. I'm not teaching this now because that is not the goal of this video. I've taught this in previous videos, but any flask application that you have is going to have a structure like this, right? It, it could, it's going to have a Python file. If it is a web application, it will have some templates as well. It will have a static folder as well, right? So what do we do first? Now the first step that you have to do is rename your Python file into application.py, right? If you're ha if it has any other name, it's not going to work. Rename that to application.py is a very easy way to do that in PyCharm is simply right click on your application, click on refactor and rename, and you can rename it to whatever you want. And wherever that thing is used in the code, it will be changed to that. So rename it to application.py. I've already done that. Next thing, the flask object that you create, it should also be named as application. If it's any other name, it's not going to work. So again, if it has any other name, say app or any other thing, just again, select it, right click it, go to refactor and rename it to application. These are the first steps. Now coming to the second step, whenever, and this is for all cloud platforms, basically, whenever you're deploying your application, right, there are going to be certain requirements, right? For, I'm using, for example, I'm using Flask library. I'm using WT forms in this case. There are going to be many other libraries, right? So we need to inform the cloud that, okay, I'm going to be using all of these libraries. So make sure that you have installed them in your servers, right? For that, we create a file called requirements.txt, right? This contains all the libraries that I'm using in my program. You have to create this file as well. To do that, you can simply go on to your Python terminal you can, and you can type the command pip freeze. When you write pip freeze, right? It will basically get fetch all the libraries that are used. And what I'm doing is I'm storing those libraries in a file called requirements.txt. So when I click enter, it's going to do that. Right. So if you don't have a requirements or txt file, once you run this command for, you'll notice that you have one now. 
so that was the second step first step was to rename your python application your flask object second was to create a requirements.txt file believe it or not there's just one more step left which is to create a folder called eb extensions right it stands for elastic bean extension and basically it will contain instructions on which python application to run right so again so you can click on new and you can create a new directory right and you can give it the name dot eb extensions i have already done that but inside the eb extension folder you have to create a file which would be called python.config and let me show you what's inside this python.config folder this is what you have to type inside the folder i'm going to leave the entire code in the description in a github account so you can simply copy and paste that from over there so basically if you see it's giving instructions on what to run so it's basically telling elastic beanstalk that it has to use a python container and that inside the application.py file it has to run the application object application flask object so this basically contains those instructions so you just need these three things right so make sure that you have done this so now this is my project folder right what you have to do now is you have to take all the important files and you have to create that into a zip folder so whatever folders you need to deploy for example i need eb extensions i need my static folder i need the templates folder i need the application file and requirements.txt and you have to convert that into a zip file if you are using a machine learning web application you probably have some pkl files you have to convert that into a zip file as well basically you have to select all the app files that are required to run your run your flask application convert that into a zip folder also have to inform me that there's another option of creating a file with the extension .ebignore inside this you can mention which all files you do not want the aws server to use right but that's optional that's not required instead we're selecting only the files that we want and we're converting that into a zip file now once that's done go back to your aws console and there are very easy steps to deploy your application simply click on create application right and you have to simply give your application name so let's say i give flask form and uh, you can add some application tag which i'm not gonna do for now simply click on your platform since i'm using a python application i do that and you have an option for uploading your code so we select that and we choose a file right so i click on the zip folder which i created make sure that it's of zip extension not rar or anything else because that's not gonna work so click on the zip folder that you selected so i've uploaded the zip folder that i had created so once it tells you that your file is successfully uploaded simply click on create application and it will automatically assign some configuration right basically you have to assign what kind of processor you want how much storage space you need what type of server you need in in the background it's doing everything so it's creating an environment it's creating something called as an s3 storage bucket which basically gives you storage space right there's another option on aws like creating an ec2 instance in that it's basically the same but you have to assign all of the configuration manually so it's a very tedious thing to do especially if you're a beginner so that's why this elastic beanstalk is better for that and you have to wait for some time it's doing a lot of configuration manually it's creating something called as a security group for security purposes on your web application so it will do all of that and when it's done it will tell you that your application is ready all right so once it's done you will be redirected to this page basically the environment of your application and it will tell you what's the health if it's working fine it's gonna show health is okay once this is done uh, you will be able to check a lot of things you'll be able to check a lot of things about your application how many uh, how many requests the application got what was the response time and something called as the logs which is going to be very important because any error that comes up is going to be printed in the log file so you can request the last 100 logs and when you download it it's going to show you this page so if it's if there's any error right even if you forgot something there's something wrong in your flask application it's gonna show over here right it's gonna show that it could not execute some command or a particular file was not found or your wrong extension file was used so you can check all of that over here now if you want to actually see your application you can simply click on applications and it will show you what application is currently running right so mine was flask form and here you have the url for your app so if i click on this 
it should redirect me to the application. So this was my web page that I wanted to deploy and it's deployed by Elastic Beanstalk and it is working if I enter my credentials anything uh, and I submit it I can see that it's working fine. It's deployed on the AWS server. So once you're done using your application, application, you can delete your application or you can even terminate your environment, right? Which you should do. Otherwise you might end up incurring some charges as well. So make sure you do that. And that was it for this video. Hope this video was helpful. If there's any other deployment video that you want to see, do leave that in the comments and see you in the next video.